I'm heading out to uh, Ed's studio, uh, Studio 32 in Johnstown, to pick up an 8x10 camera. And the first lesson I learned was uh, you need to have the conversation in mind whenever you go to set something up. Um, it takes I mean, around 15-20 minutes to get uh, a composition set up, framed, uh, focused, uh, and metered correctly. And if you're not quick enough, you can, you can actually lose the composition or lose the light you were going for. Um, so in this case, I was out with Sean. And we were shooting uh, at a location that he suggested right in the golden hour, or I guess, yeah, golden hour light as, as the sun rises in the morning. Uh, it was ridiculously cold outside. I probably should have brought gloves, but we went through. Um, here I am explaining a little bit of um, what f-stop we're using and what uh, depth of field we would expect with uh, with such a camera. Uh, these were all shot on Fomapan 200. Um, Ed was kind enough to give me a few extra sheets. Um, so it's a sheet film with a, a decent bit of dynamic range. Um, I also picked up a whole box of uh, HP5 uh, in 8x10 as well. So here's the first shot. Really love how all the colors turned out and how the highlights were captured. Lesson two here was uh, be prepared to sacrifice a few sheets. Um, I developed these uh, by hand in trays, uh, and it can be very difficult to do in complete lack of light. So this isn't a dark room where you can use a low energy red light bulb um, and actually see what you're doing. This is completely dark. You can't see the hand in front of your face. Um, I'm really happy with these. how these turned out. Um, my buddy couldn't all brave the cold. Uh, and, and we really got some great shots out of it. Again, this was uh, the Foam Pan 200. Um, I believe I developed the second one a little bit longer, so I probably pushed it a stop because um, I was develop developing these sheet by sheet. So it was a little more contrasty, but again, really like the final product. Moving into the studio with Bianca, um, on the right you have a video um, through the viewfinder of my uh, 4x5 camera, but similar framing for the 8x10. Um, the shot that I had here didn't turn out, again it looks cool, it looks artistic, but uh, my developer was actually too warm compared to my film. Uh, because I'm in Pittsburgh, it's a little bit cold out, so make sure you use a pre-wash to bring your uh, sheet film up to, the up to the same temperature that um, your developer is in. Now, moving on, I had these same issues with some of the sheets from Shayla, but I feel like they still turned out. Um, they weren't as drastic. Um, it could be just because the film was warming up um, as it sat in my house and was getting ready to develop. Um, this is part of an ongoing maternity series that I've been working on uh, with her, and she was kind enough to let me into her home uh, with her daughter and uh, her unborn child. So I'm excited to see when that, that product develops. Now, moving outside again, I'm with my friend Jake. Uh, here I use some some tilt shift and some swing uh, with these photos. Uh, the 300 millimeter lens I have is stuck at an f9 uh, for minimum aperture, so you can't get crazy amounts of bokeh um, from this dist distance from the subject. But it is reasonable, and it still gives that really really classic look. Um, this second shot is probably my favorite out of the two, uh, and overall I'm really happy with how the HP5 uh, rendered. Uh, all the details and the highlights and the shadows. I shot pretty much everything at box speed. Um, and uh, I, next up are my two friends, Dennis and Alana. Uh, this I shot on Fomapan as well. I had some extra sheets of that laying around. Um, the lesson here being uh, be mindful of your gear and lighting conditions. So here I had a light leak in the corner come through uh, due to a uh, loose seal on the bottom of my sheet film holder and uh, that really uh, kind of added that light into the, the first image which again it's, it's a little distracting it doesn't ruin it but uh, the second one turned out much better actually a third one that did not turn out uh, for similar reasons now in setting up and getting ready to tear things down uh, you're gonna need a lot more time than you would anticipate particularly if you haven't shot large format before take time to familiarize yourself with your camera um, all the settings, so how you move the front and rear standards, so the front and back of the camera forwards and backwards and tilt them left, right, up, down, um, and make sure you select the, the right lens for what you're trying to accomplish.
Point shooting large format, um, it's really important to explain, particularly when you're doing portraits to your subjects, what the constraints of your camera are. Um, a lot of people haven't seen a film camera this big um, and, and are probably more accustomed to shooting digital. So shooting one sheet at a time and being very purposeful with what you do um, can definitely be a change of pace. So if everyone's sort of knowledgeable and on board with that, uh, you end up getting some really great shots. So this is my friend Harmony. Um, we captured, uh, uh, again, this is on HP5 as well, captured a lot of her really awesome tattoos. So she's got the sternum tat, upper right collarbone, and then um, I cropped out the one that's near her arm, but on the original sheet, it's still um, visible. Now, in shooting this, we lit this with tungsten lights. I got some extra studio lights for around 25 bucks and had to rewire the the clips at the end uh, because they were uh, worn out, uh, but really happy with uh, how things turned out there. The, le the next lesson I have here is to really triple check your unloading environment. I actually had some very strange light leaks that actually weren't scratches. Um, so on the previous image and the image coming up, um, I had these like weird intermediate, intermittent streaks uh, along the film that, that weren't scratches, but they were light being introduced some way, somehow. And I realized that it was actually my fitness ring, my aura ring that had um, I had switched from generation two to generation three, and uh, the generation three has actually light emitting diodes uh, or LEDs in the ring itself, um, and those created those uh, strange patterns of light that's, that streaked across the, the negatives here. So uh, again, not not terrible uh, because you can always crop those out in like Photoshop, but if you're doing any sort of alternative process, um, that can become quite annoying uh, given that you're already fighting dust and any sorts of scratch or damage uh, to the film. Next up we have um, my shoot here with Gage um, and Gianna's kindly doing makeup here um, and Griffin is taking all this behind the scenes. Uh, we were really going for a chrome robotic look, uh, sort of Tin Man meets uh, David Bowie, uh, and, and I really think we pulled off the, the look well. Gage um, is wonderful. He, he dove in here with both feet, so we have a whole chrome wardrobe, and he's chromed out literally from the tip of his head to um, the bottom of his toes. Uh, so I have two different things set up here. I have a sort of pl more plain backdrop, and then I also created a, uh, a box with cutouts that is aligned with... Uh, chrome detailing and the the chrome really uh, makes a big difference in terms of how the light is reflected so when I uh, show later in the video that the light is uh, reflecting all off of all different surfaces uh, we're really able to use a reasonable sh shutter speed um, with a large format camera and then some of my other cameras um, and, and get a really good result without having to sacrifice um, or risk uh, the subject moving too much um, so I was able to keep the shutter around um, a 60th of a second. Now, of course, um, after we get all chromed up, we also have to have fun. Uh, it's not all its not all strictly business here. So Gage is showing us some of his great dance moves. Um, and coming up, we'll, we'll walk through what the process looks like of shooting um, on the 8x10 camera with, with Gage as well. Here I really pushed the limits of what was available um, or what was possible with the camera itself. Uh, overall, uh, I was really happy with the image. Um, here I brought the camera in really, really close um, and really took advantage of the movements that were possible with uh, the front standard being where it was. Uh, that being said, I pushed the limits here a little bit and actually uh, the image circle of the lens was not sufficient to cover up the top edge of the frame. So I actually had maybe a three quarter inch um, strip along the the top of the frame that was completely black and unexposed so again would ruin things if you were doing some sort of like official print or contact print or alternative process but for anything that you're going to scan and, and display online it's not terrible uh, but just something to keep in mind so again i'm using these tungsten lights and um, i have him set up uh, in a very very warm box um, and again, he's a champion for, for sitting here and being so patient with me and getting this set up. Um, being that I'm so close to the subject, my depth of field uh, with the 50 mil equivalent lens that I have on here is very, very small. Um, it's somewhere on the order of, I would say, like half of a centimeter to a centimeter itself. So here I try to focus on 
uh, gauges eyeballs, uh, which you can do uh, quite easily on the back of the rear standard, but with that being said, uh, you, that, that assumes he would not move at all. Um, so there was no head brace involved with any of these shots. I ended up taking two. Uh, one of them I missed focus, and then the second one I hit it out of the park. Um, so if you have a few extra sheets lying around, don't be afraid to experiment because that sort of um, perfect shot uh, really, really makes it all worth it. So here, um, again, hard to tell with the YouTube video, but I've his eyeball is like completely sharp, um, and then uh, pretty much in front of his eyelashes is out of focus. So really, really happy with how that one turned out. Um, and again, the, the development looks pretty good. Um, if I did this again, I'd probably uh, move my lights around a little bit to even out the light across his face um, and, and give a, a more soft look, uh, particularly on the right side of the image. After shooting the large format, I set up my Intrepid with the Lomograph lockback. So right now I have the adapter inserted between uh, the rear standard and the ground glass. Um, again, I should probably be using a dark cloth here, but um, given the space constraints, I really didn't want uh, to bump into anything that I already had set up. So again, uh, Lomograph lock is a really cool thing Lomography uh, came out with. I can link to it below. Uh, that it allows you to take instant photos um, similar to Fuji's peel apart film uh, without having to spend hundreds of dollars. Um, so this works out to be like 50 or 75 cents a shot, which again is much more affordable than 15 or 20, um, which would be the, the pack film alternative. So I'm here, I'm loading it into the back and clipping in the, the graph locks clips. Um, and then following that, I'll take out the dark slide. I may do a whole video uh, about sort of the walkthrough of my experience and um, sort of a, a mini review of the Lemograph lock itself. Overall, I've, I've been pretty happy with it. Um, it's really great to be able to give your subjects um, a, an image they can hold after shooting large format um, while you go uh, and take the time to develop the sheet film. Again, I'm very happy with how these came out. Um, I didn't filter this, so this is again tungsten light on a daylight balanced film. So it's gonna come out a little bit yellow, yellow green but at the end of the day, not, not terrible. Um, I really like how it rendered the colors um, around Gage's eyes, and then, of course, the, the reflection of everything in the, um, within the box lo looked great as well. Um, and again, these look incredibly sharp, so it's, it's awesome to see what uh, Instax wide film can actually do uh, in the context of uh, a better lens, a better camera body, and a more controlled sort of lighting environment than you would get from a regular disposable. Um, now after this, we moved over to the more basic set uh, where Gage did not have to stick his head through a giant cardboard box um, and, and grab some more shots. So I did one more eight x 10 shot and um, a few four x five shots along with some digital. I'm gonna limit this video to just the film shots that I took. Um, here we have him set up and posed in a, again, chrome jacket, chrome hat. Um, have this set up to frame about his like hip height um, all the way up to his head so you can see the ground glass here um, this is technically actually like pvc or plastic but it's still bright enough to frame off of um, now the final image i'm pretty happy with um, i could probably improve my tilt um, left and right um, to capture uh, his both of his eyes in like perfect focus right now one is nailed and the other one is like 50 percent of the way there um, again, had the issue with uh, the fitness ring light leaking uh, into the film, which again, I didn't notice until weeks after the fact and after trying to decipher what had, what had gone wrong. And again, uh, we're working in some more dance moves and having a little more fun uh, before the shoot is over. Um, and I whipped out my, uh, again, Intrepid 4.5. I have the Mark IV Black Edition. Um, and took two shots. These are on Kodak T-Max 400. Um, really love the, the, the depth of field I'm able to get here. I'm um, shooting with the 260 mil lens, which is around like a 75 or 80 mil equivalent on uh, 35 millimeter. Uh, and then after this shoot, a couple of days later, um, I shot in the studio with Maddie and Sydney. Really? Should we start like... Yeah. Slay! Stop making me laugh. I had like three wires back to the 
actually commissioned someone. I asked, like, oh, what brand is the camera? Is it Sony, Nikon, Canon? He commissioned someone to make it, so it's like a custom camera from scratch. Oh my god! But if you buy them, in, like for retail, they're like ten grand ish. Oh wow! Um, big difference in the negatives. So they're eight by ten inches. Uh, so when you scan them, they're like four hundred megapixels, five hundred megapixels, like per image. Um, it's how a lot of old uh, film photos used to be taken. So light comes through the lens in the back. Um, you focus it on the screen under here. So the little bag stays on while you're doing yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Oh my gosh, that's so right, it's like, it's not Let me see. <laughs> that's not real. Like, it doesn't look real. Whoa. He's upside down. Wait. Like, it doesn't look real. Yeah. Yo, that's <laughs> so weird. That's uh, crazy. Arch Run is really an, an amazing experience to see. Um, it's almost un unbelievable to see it with your own eyes. So take every advantage you have um, and, and share it with the people around you. So I called in some favors from friends and other people I had met um, just to really take full advantage of having the camera um, and taking a, a wide variety of shots, testing different lighting, testing different focal lengths, uh, testing different framing to see what I really liked using the format. Um, again, love how the shot turned out with Maddie. We used the same tungsten lights in a different formation. Again, this is on HP5, with that sort of sheer translucent, translucent dress, um, and I think it really turned out well. In framing up Sydney's shot, I was very purposeful with um, my backdrop selection. So she's in like a hot pink and light outfit, um, and then we have red in the background. So I actually shot uh, the next two shots with a uh, blue filter. Um, and, and I really love how these turned out. So a blue filter for black and white images will um, lift the blues and uh, depress the reds with respect to each other. So here uh, the background becomes almost near black, like a deep shadow and makes her figure really, really pop out um, and gives it a, a natural contrast without having to do too much in post. Um, now that becomes really important if you're doing any sort of um, contact printing process or enlarging process. Uh, where you don't have a lot of control over the contrast, for example, like a cyanotype. So having filters available, either diffusion filters, color filters, ND filters, whatever it may be, um, and correcting for as much as physically possible um, in camera will yield the best results um, in 35 millimeter all the way up to 8x10, but given the time and space constraints of 8x10, uh, you really, really have to be purposeful with uh, with how you set up each shot. Yeah. Um, and, and if you do it right, the results are, are definitely worth it. So here's the framing that um, you're seeing with Sydney and she's getting ready to go here and is staying very, very still, which, which really led to a great portrait. Um, here, this is again, one of my favorites. We use the blue filter. So the blue filter brings down all the reds in her eyes and her hair and her lips and the backdrop um, and the yellow in her skin. Uh, actually uh, contrasts and pops out against that so the level of detail here is a little bit crazy you can zoom in and see um, you can see her like individual eyelashes uh, which is is impressive considering the the age uh, of this camera and the limitations of the equipment uh, that, I, that I had here uh, following that I took a few shots on my uh, Intrepid 4x5 here as well um, I had some Portra 160 uh, lined up that I actually kind of butchered the development on, but we got a cool look out of it. Uh, gives me a very sort of euphoria vibe uh, with the hot pinks and the blues and the greens and the yellows. Um, I tested out a new development tank uh, and uh, it was a rotary tank, but my internal uh, film holding element did not rotate with the container. Uh, so it resulted in only part of the image being developed um, at the right time and giving me all those streaks in the image. So again, not the best uh, outcome, but again, it looks it looks pretty cool. Um, I also took a few 35 millimeter shots uh, with a longer focal length you don't normally see. So I shot with a 200 millimeter lens, um, which again is a 200 millimeter on 35 millimeter full frame uh, on Lomachrome Purple. 
which I'm really, really happy with how they turned out here. Um, you got these really awesome saturated pinks and uh, whites and purples. Um, Lemon Purple is a really cool film stock to shoot, so I would encourage you, um, if you haven't tried it out, to, to give it a shot. Um, I also have the turquoise version of this pre-ordered, and I'm excited to, to shoot it myself. Now, after finishing all this stuff up, I went home, developed, again, dried negatives as needed, um, and went about contact printing them. Um, and here I contact printed them with uh, cyanotype dye, so I used a paper and soaked it in the um, cyanotype chemicals, and cyanotypes give a very brilliant blue image. So here I'm rinsing the cyanotype after about 40 minutes of exposure with a UV light. Um, and I'm really happy with the results. This is about an 11 by 14 print. Uh, I had to custom make a contact printing frame to hold the negative up against the glass without it moving. If it moves, you'll get sort of an out of focus cloudy image, uh, but you'll get a really, really sharp one if you use a, a printing frame. So in rinsing this off, usually you won't, um, if you do this yourself, you won't get as brilliant of a blue. Um, I sort of cheated the system here. Uh, as, as this paper oxidizes um, and, and is exposed to an acidic environment, it'll become a deeper and deeper blue. So I added a few drops of hydrogen peroxide, which you can find just probably in your, your bathroom uh, cabinet or anything like that it comes in a brown bottle um, as well as some vinegar to uh, bring down the pH of the solution and, and really uh, yield those deep brilliant blues um, earlier on uh, versus having to wait normally it'll be a, a medium light blue uh, similar to the blue on that brush and um, over time it'll oxidize and, and get darker in color so probably like a 24-hour period but here I want to just show the show the drastic effect um, so that's it for my, my video of uh, 10 tips for uh, shooting 8x10 film. I hope you enjoyed it.